Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelvin here. So recently, MAS issued a new guideline telling crypto service providers to not promote their services to the general public. So in this video, I want to explain what this whole thing is about and just share my thoughts regarding this new crypto guideline. But as usual, I would greatly appreciate it if you can help to tap the like button because it will help out with the channel. I will show you a swimming sea lion. Alright, let's start right now. First thing first, let's take a look at what's the new guideline. With this new guideline, crypto service providers should not promote their services in Singapore public areas or through any other media targeted at Singapore general public. So I guess no more fortune favors the brave in MRTs? Oh what? You say it's too small and you didn't notice it? Nah, this one is much bigger. They also can't advertise on newspapers like your one bao, third party websites, social media platforms, stuff like that. On top of that, service providers should not engage third parties like social media influencers or third party websites to promote them. So this means they can't find that skinny guy carrying less investing to promote them. However, they can still promote their services on their own websites and social media. Finally, they also specifically say that service providers should not provide physical ATMs in public areas. So that's why you saw companies removing their Bitcoin ATMs the next day. I'm sure some of you will be like, huh? Singapore got Bitcoin ATM meh? God, God. But don't worry, now no more liao. Fun fact, did you know that one of the company's name is Daenerys? Someone on Hardware Zone commented, too much Game of Thrones. I don't know about you, but the last time I saw the name Daenerys, let's just say her ending wasn't the best. Just like what's happening to the Bitcoin ATMs now. So in short, you will see less advertisements regarding crypto platforms starting from now. But why did MS suddenly decided to do this? Is it because the ifufu nothing better to do? No lah, of course not. Actually, it's not a sudden thing. All along, they have been quite active. As of July last year, MAS had actually received over 170 applications to provide crypto services. Among them, there's only 90 companies which got the temporary exemption. You know, those companies like Gemini, Crypto.com, Hodonot, they haven't really got the license yet. They are just on the exemption list, which, by the way, has an expiry date. And so far, there's only four platforms that received the digital payment token license. And very recently, CoinHako got the in-principle approval too. So the reason they are doing this is because they know crypto is a very risky asset class and they want to do this carefully. Because you know, there are a lot of people who are new to investing and they will anyhow yolo their money away. In 2021 alone, DeFi Rockpool scammed away a god like $2.8 billion, making the $8.5 million OCBC scam look like child's play. Or what about those random to the moon cryptos like Shiba Inu, Doggy Coin, I'm also pretty sure many people lost money on them. Even a while ago, when I made a video to expose that scammy Neko Inu game, some people be like, calling it a scam isn't wrong, but to not utilize it while it exists is also stupid. Three weeks later, and it's gone. So on one hand, Singapore has grand ambitions to become global crypto hub. And on the other hand, you have people yoloing their entire life savings into scams, while knowing it's a scam. This guy says he the best. Good la later lose money sinky kpkb like ocbc scam own self click money gone cry father mother. So here are my thoughts. Crypto is much more complex than what you think. When most people hear about crypto, they only think that crypto is just the name and the price. But crypto is way way deeper than that. You have all sorts of stuff going behind the scenes like decentralized exchange, borrowing and lending platform, play to earn game, liquidity mining, NFTs, and so many more. Personally, I've been checking out crypto for over a few months now, and the stuff that I know is still less than 1% of the entire thing. A while ago, there was a study to find out what Singaporeans think about crypto. What it found was that among the investors who responded, 67% of them were investing in crypto. And for those who do not invest in crypto, the main reason is because there is lack of knowledge and understanding. Their main source of crypto information came from crypto bloggers, YouTubers, and social media. And as you might guess, sometimes it is very hard to tell what is fake or what's real when you are online. Like maybe you see your favorite artist talking about Ethereum Max and you'll be like, if they like it, then I like it. Then again, you just go and yolo your money into it. And it's gone. Turns out they were being paid to promote their crypto. So because there's so many people not understanding crypto and end up hurting themselves. MS had no choice but to ask crypto platforms to stop advertising their services. But I feel besides asking crypto platforms to not advertise their services, it's also important to let bloggers and websites educate the public about cryptos. Because if you want to talk about risky investments, there's a whole bunch out there besides crypto. Like these two kids lost 80k playing with forex and futures. 
some people lost over $1.45 million in stock buying scam. Even 1 in 2 people who used the CPF to invest lost money. And what's the solution to that? Ban investing? No lah, that will be counterproductive. A better way is to educate investors on what's a better way to invest. That's what all the investment blogs and YouTubers have been doing all along, right? Like I talk about investing in so many videos, talk until my slide was also dry. I believe that should be the same for cryptos too. While cryptos is super risky and stuff, the risk comes from not knowing what you are doing. And with the right mindset, I feel that the general public will know how to better invest in crypto. As for myself, I'm not exactly sure what this guideline means for me. Does it mean I can no longer talk about the platforms? Because if I talk, later some guy reports me and it turns out I went against the law? Eh, I don't know. Probably I will try to find out more first before making any more tutorial videos. But anyway, what do you think about this new MAS guideline? Let me know down below. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.